Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another fantastic Misty Media tutorial. Today we're going to talk about photo merge in Photoshop. I'm going to be using CS6, but this goes back a couple versions, so you should be good to follow along. Uh, we're going to start up in Adobe Bridge, and you'll see I've got these five pictures right here. You can see there's this panorama type thing, and then you've got these two crazy kids standing in front of a barn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge all these guys together into one thing. They'll be really long and cool. So the first step of this is obviously getting your files. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select them all, just control A, select them all, or if you, know, if you have a bunch of files there, click on the first one, shift, click on the last one, or if they're all separated out, you can click one and control click all the other ones that you want, it's great. The next thing, you can go up to this tools menu, go to Photoshop, and then there's photo merge right here. There's tons of other good stuff. Load files into Photoshop layers, lens correction, merge HDR Pro. It's great and it's way, I think it's way easier than going into Photoshop and doing it from there. You can do it from inside Photoshop, but we're just doing it from in Bridge. I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop at the end of this, just in case you want to learn. So Photoshop's opening up and it's going to give us this new dialog box right here. This is where you can determine which algorithm you want to use to blend your images together. Auto will pick it for you and the rest are pretty self-explanatory. Perspective, like you know, standing in one spot, going around, cylindrical, it's like, you know, a cylinder. Spherical, I mean. You got this. Okay, so it's loaded all of our files up in here. It's great. Uh, we're gonna make sure this blend images together box is ticked. If you have super heavy vignetting, you can put the vignette removal thing on. It would probably be good in this case to use geometric distortion correction, but I'm gonna show you a couple other little more manual, little more precise ways of doing that, especially for something that's kind of as weird as this guy. I'm just gonna hit okay, and Photoshop is gonna go and think for a while and blend these images together. All right, now that Photoshop is done thinking and putting all these images together, we see we have this really cool looking panorama thing. But you'll notice our, our children, Chase and Palmer, are gone. Well, they're actually hidden right here. You can see since Photoshop goes through and picks which parts of which image it wants to use in the panorama since we hit auto blend, uh, it decided that it didn't want to use Chase and Palmer. So super easy fix for that. We'll just find the layer that they're on, select the layer mask, make sure that we have white selected over here in the foreground, and hit alt delete, bam, they're there. Now we can just go around and paint off, see if we find any edges, uh, switch twitch to black, hit X, we'll just paint around a little bit. All right, so now we've got those pretty good. So that's sort of the photo merge part. So let's select all these layers, hit Control G to group them, and then hit Control Alt Shift E, and that'll basically make a flattened duplicate of everything that we can use to work with. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to Filter, and you can go to Lens Correction, or just use Control Shift R like a normal person. Now in here is we're gonna get rid of this nasty, obviously distortion, this curved thing above, because this barn in real life was not actually curved. It was a straight line. So let's go and we'll tweak with the vertical thing, vertical perspective. We're just gonna make sure we can get these lines vertical, and then later on these lines vertical. Do a little bit of horizontal, perspective, and then geometric distortion removal. All right, now that's a pretty good start. So let's hit okay, and we good with that for now. Now before we tweak this, Mr. Chase, he told me he wanted to lose 15 pounds in this. So let's just make a duplicate with Control J and then go to Control Shift X, which will bring up your liquify menu. Uh, let's hit Z, bring up your zoom tool, marquee around there, and it'll zoom us in. Now we can just hit W to go to our warp tool, start, you know, spinning him up. We're not gonna do a super accurate job just cause this is a tutorial. If you hit F, you can change to your freeze tool and you can make sure that Palmer doesn't change at all because she's great. She's just fine the way she is. Holding down Alt, you can unfreeze stuff while you're on the freeze tool. Back to W, go to your warp tool. Let's go to the pucker tool. And let's boop, 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 boop. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm fine with that. Let's hit OK. Hit Control Zero and let's A, B that. I'd say it's about 15 pounds, right? So now let's control J again. Let's label these. This will be... Weight Watchers. So now you can see there's still a little bit of bowing and there's this funny bowing outward on some of these other ones. This plank is obviously actually bowed out in real life. 
So control T, go to your free transform tool, right click, go to warp. Now let's just kind of start trying to even this guy out. If you hit control R, you can bring up your rulers and then you can drag from there and get a new guide. So from there, we can define exactly what we want to happen. So we'll try and match the top thing and bottom thing up with this line and some of the vertical boards up with those guides. So let's go through just real quick. Let's go see what we can make happen. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. Let's hit this little check mark. You can also hit enter or double click on your image and that'll save the things for you. Let's turn off all those guys. So we're just dealing with this one and then go to view, clear guides. Uh, there's still a little bit of a curve up there. Let's just try and get rid of that guy real quick. All right, and I'm fine with that. That looks pretty neat. Next, we're gonna hit C, go to the crop tool. Holding alt, you can bring in both sides the same. Speed it up a little bit, let same thing. Let's just get that no trespassing sign out of there right now. So we don't even need to clone stamp because this isn't a tutorial on clone stamping. This is on photo merging and those techniques involved. So, oh, there's a little bit down there. So, ah, uh, fine, let's take that out. Control Shift N, make a new layer named stamp. Hit S, go to your clone stamp tool, select a place and just paint that guy in there. Great. All right, so that's a pretty solid looking panorama. It's very rectilinear, word of the day, rectilinear. You know, looking like a rectangle. Let's just do some quick look development on this just to make it look a little neater. Let's make a gradient map, make it a little more contrasty. And then we'll reduce this guy's opacity. No, it still looks a little bright for me. Let's make this a really moody. Uh, if you watch my tutorial on how to assign an action to a keyboard shortcut. I just created a new curves layer with shift F12. Which is super cool. So let's just bring this guy down. So let's keep keep the shadows kind of where they are. Just uh, not loving that. Actually, yeah, they look a little soft to me. Let's turn these guys off. Let's hit control alt shift E another time. Uh, quick little windows tip. If you tap alt, you see that the all your little names up here get underlined. So you'll see filter has a T underlined. So hit Alt T, brings up your filter thing. You know, just remain with keyboard focus. So we're gonna go down to Topaz in focus, just using all the keyboard. I'm gonna bring our blur radius up to a little above two. That looks pretty good. Okay. We're gonna wait for that to process. All right, cool. Let's hit Control J, make a new layer. Let's hit M. Shift M, get a rectangular marquee tool, and we'll do that same thing. Alt T, go down Topaz Labs, and I'll do detail. And see, now this time we only process this little bit of the image, so it'll be a little quicker. Because I know I don't want to sharpen the whole thing. I just kind of want a little bit on their faces, and maybe some of their clothes. Just because it's fun. So you just bump up small details, smidgen. Small boost, large boost, large detail. Just, you know, give a little more contrast to the edges. Control D, unselect stuff. Hold down Alt and click the little layer mask button down here. Zoom in, let me get out my Wacom pen, hit B to bring up your brush. And all right, we have white selected already. I'm just kind of sharpen these guys up. Very cool, very cool beans. Uh, all right. Control zero, go back to full zoom out, I guess. Get those guys. Let's go to the top. Control alt shift E. Uh, let's not do that yet. Hit M and then shift M. Bring up your elliptical marked key. Holding down alt, it will make the, the selection scale from the center of where you started. So let's just make a little vignette type thing. Hit control alt R, bring up refine edge, feather. Let's Crank that guy up to a thousand. Hit OK. We'll shift F2 again. Little curves trick. Let's put this guy at the top. Bring this in. And then let's just bring this down. And you'll see that did the opposite of what we wanted it to. So just click on the layer mask and do Control I and that'll invert it. And whoa, that is a whole lot of vignette. Now this sky up here is kind of bothering me. So I'm going to first try a bigger way of doing it. And then if that doesn't work, we might try it a little more selective way. So we're just going to make another curves layer real quick. It's going to hit G, bring up our gradient tool. And we'll just make a little gradient going across. So see how that kind of saturated it up a little more. I don't want that. So let's go make another gradient map. It's a black and white. 
holding down control and alt and you click in between the two layers you can actually make it that curves layer that we just made as a clipping mask and you can see it gets kind of black and white over there we just bring the opacity down let's make our there we go and i was just holding down shift while i was making that gradient and that keeps it as a straight line and now just to make it a little more dramatic just since you know we're having fun here control alt shift e will duplicate it and you just bring it down below and you can just pick how much you want there it's cool um and there we go just a nice little going over a couple little tips and tricks we got this super dramatic thing could be anything we can even crop it in and make it like a facebook banner type picture if we wanted to and just you know do whatever you want it's a really handy thing now this technique can also be used to merge a bunch of images that are taken from the same angle together and you could actually so if we had like two images of this one and palmer looked great and chase had a derp face in one but there's another one where Chase looked great and Palmer had a derp face, then we could just uh, align them together and then that way we could just use Chase's face from the one and Palmer's face from the other and not have to do any manual like real work. And now I said at the beginning that I would show you a couple ways to do it from within Photoshop, uh, it meaning the photo merge. So you can do is go up to File, Automate, Photo Merge. And that'll just bring you up to that dialog that we had before and you just have to go and pick your files. Uh, another way to do it is you can actually get all your files into one Photoshop document and then go up to edit auto align layers and then edit auto blend layers and that'll do the same thing. I know in previous versions of Photoshop I've had trouble with the photo merge feature so I just would do this all the time and it's like the same thing. So yeah, I hope you learned some stuff. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. Uh, eat your vegetables, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.